Hey everybody, I'm Adam Peters. Welcome to my 2023 Outdoor Grow Journal. Okay, checking in this week. Here we go, lady number one. She is looking good by and large. Uh, She's getting a little bushy, so I might want to do some defoliation. I think I said that last week. Um, my son's been in the hospital this past week, so I have not, this has not been the priority for me. Um, but they're coming right along out here. Um, let's check from above what she looks like. Looking very good, gonna have a lot of bud sites on here. It's very interesting the way that, the differing ways that, that these grow. Um, She's a little more indica heavy. Uh, these branches here bunching at the top. So uh, it's just interesting just how differently some of these plants grow. She's looking good by and large. There is some insect damage here and there, uh, but not anything that I'm going to worry about too much. Uh, sorry, that sound is my tape measure. Pulling that out because we're to take a look and see how tall she is. She is just about 46, 47 inches, something like that. Uh, so not just barely not four feet. And I think she's grown roughly six inches since last time. So uh, it's pretty consistent, six inches a week. And so, yeah, so I'm pleased with how she's looking. Um, moving on to her neighbor here next door. As we've noted before, she's a more sativa heavy cultivar. She's a little sparser, a little, uh, growing a little more vertically. But let's check her actual height. And she is about 50 inches or so, 49, 50 inches. So just slightly higher than her, her sister over there. And uh, yeah, looking good. Um, let's take a look from above. So not quite as densely packed, but she's still going to have plenty of bud sites on here. So good, looking good. Uh, tiny bit of insect damage, nothing to worry about really. So I'm not going to. And uh, yeah, she's coming right along. I'm pleased with her. And then number three over here, you can see she is really getting bushy. And she's actually get really getting tall as well. Uh, she is... Just like her sister, about 49, 50 inches tall. So just barely over four feet and uh, looking good. You see these dual drooping uh, branches right here. I'll get back to that in a second. Um, why that is and why I don't sound particularly concerned about it. So from above, looking good. She is going to have a ton of bud sites. So I'm expecting this plant really to produce a lot. So this drooping branch issue, what's going on there? So earlier in the week, we had a bit of a storm as we did last night. And this actually is brand new. So you see this branch just snapped off at the bottom and these branches get older. They do get very stout, but they also get very brittle. And so they will snap off like this if uh, the appropriate uh, force is applied. So. What happened here, happened here and here earlier in the week. We had a storm and uh, it was violent enough to snap these off. So I put them right back up with duct tape. And as you see here, this break, you can see the bass fibers, at least a lot of them are still attached. And obviously the live portion, some of the live portion is a lot, is still attached. And like with this branch, enough of that live portion is still kicking that this branch is just doing just fine. You see, this is growing great. However, next door, did a little mishap. I taped her up and then the tape somehow came loose and she fell back down again. I put her back up again, but somewhere in that process, enough of the live part of the branch seems to have gotten damaged that her foliage is really not looking good. So she's just not going to make it. So I'm going to take that off and it's just going to be a loss and it's, Unfortunate, but that's what it is. But it's obviously a lower branch, even though it was on the south, southwest side of the plant. Would have produced pretty well, but you know, 
this is cost of doing business. I am going to get some duct tape and tape that up because like I said, that happened last night. That wasn't like that yesterday. Um, and hopefully that branch will be fine. But that one's on the north side of the plant. If it's not fine, it's not a huge loss probably. So, so there you go. But as I said, she has so much other growth going on. That's great. Oh, a little noticing, a little guest of a ladybug here. So it's a little friendly visitor, a beneficial insect. One of the reasons why I don't have any out of control pest problems. So it's just really nice to see ladybugs or any beneficial insects hanging out. But yeah, that's our update for this week. Uh, and yeah, I'm happy with where we are. And uh, although she's getting kind of tall. So my I've said all along in this process, my goal was to keep, one of my main goals for this year's outdoor grow was to keep the height of these plants under control. I think I've done that so far, but we do have about three weeks left of the vegetative stage. So I don't want to let it get out of hand now, but I mean, four feet at this point, I'm pretty pleased with. Um, we'll get a stretch of two or three feet probably. Um, so I'll keep an eye on this, but um, uh, my goal was to keep it under six, seven feet. I think I'll be right in the neighborhood. So, but we shall see how that unfolds in the next month or so. So, uh, but yeah, pleased with where we are and we're just gonna keep on trucking. I am gonna work on the scrog here. As I mentioned, my son's been in the hospital, so it hasn't, I haven't had time to get out here and be doing something like that, but hopefully he will be out very, very soon and uh, we will uh, be able to get things a little more back on track out here. So let's move on and see what the topic for this week is. Today, I'd like to talk to you about Integrated Pest Management, or IPM. Now, IPM is nothing more than a plan to deal with pests, diseases, and weeds that encompasses everything you do in these areas, from mulching to spraying to companion planting and on and on. The idea being that you want to keep your plants healthy and maximize your harvest while minimally impacting your health or the environment. It doesn't need to be an actual written plan, but that's not a bad idea either. Now, IPM is different for indoor grows than outdoor grows. With an indoor grow, you want to eliminate all pests because hopefully you're starting out with none. And indoors, pests don't have anything else to eat, so they are really going to go to town on your cannabis plants. But outdoors, the goal is not to eliminate all pests. It's to reduce the pest numbers to an acceptable level. We are growing outdoors in Mother Nature's territory after all. And outside, there ought to be a lot of other plants around that will interest all kinds of bugs, so they shouldn't just camp out on your cannabis. At least that's true for the ones who can fly. There are, of course, bugs like caterpillars and mites that don't fly and will just set up shop on your cannabis plants and stay there, so you will want to deal with those more aggressively. Be aggressive! Passive aggressive! But one important note, not all insects are problematic, and many are beneficial, so you shouldn't just kill everything indiscriminately. In a subsequent episode, I'll talk about identifying insects, particularly the beneficial ones. The three cornerstones of IPM are prevention, monitoring and evaluation, and intervention. For prevention, the first thing in my IPM plan for an outdoor grow is choosing an appropriate cultivar. In previous videos, I've talked about how important that is here in Virginia, so I won't belabor the point. But I will mention that last year I took a chance and I grew a cultivar that I was told might or might not work here. So I gave it a shot and I found out the hard way it did not work here. It grew like a m and it was gigantic. But come September, October, well, that one, while huge and loaded with beautiful buds, it was also covered with white powdery mildew. While my tried and true Skylar cultivar, literally right next to it, was completely clean. As I've noted in the past couple videos, this Skylar cultivar is also very resistant to pests. So it sort of begs the question, why do I screw around growing any other cultivar here? Prevention can take on a lot of forms, like mulching to prevent weeds or preemptively spraying your plants. Now I've had leaf hoppers every season I've grown outside here. So I could have just started spraying weekly from the beginning to prevent them. But leaf hoppers have never done a ton of damage to my plants and spraying affects beneficial insects as well as pests. So I don't like to spray all the time like that.
But the other pest I get every year is broad mites, and unlike leafhoppers, broad mites have caused me a ton of damage. But here at least they don't show up until flowering begins in August, so I haven't had to do anything about them yet. But I do have a plan. Now broad mites are tiny, tiny little bugs. They're so small they can't be seen with the naked eye. But despite their diminutive size, they are incredibly destructive to cannabis flowers. Several years ago, I lost over half of my outdoor harvest to them. Now, I found it impossible to eradicate them by spraying, and the only way I was able to preserve any of my harvest back then was to hack off all of the infested parts of the plants. But last year, I had a new idea. I was able to ID them much earlier, and I bought predatory mites and set them loose, and it worked like a charm. So this year, I'm going to preemptively deploy the predatory mites the first week of August when flowering begins, in the hope that they'll take care of the broad mites before they can really get started. On to monitoring and evaluation. Now, whether you're growing indoors or out, you should inspect your plants at least once a day. And this doesn't need to be some long, drawn-out process. Just take a look at the plants from a bit of a distance and just see if everything looks as it should. Then go and inspect the leaves for any marks that could be insect damage or any kind of discoloration that could be signs of a deficiency or disease or what have you. Then take a look around the stem and the branches and look underneath just to make sure that there's nothing funny going on under there either. And then you're good. It should only take a few minutes. But it's really important that you do this every day. Because if you give bugs a 48 or even 72 hour head start, it'll make your job a lot more difficult. If you do see something wonky, then you need to figure out what it is and decide what you're going to do about it, if anything. As I learned with my leafhopper encounters, not every situation requires a response. Sometimes leaving Mother Nature to her own devices is the best thing that you can do. But if you decide that something does need to be done, then your third cornerstone, intervention, comes in. Spraying, pruning, fertilizing, it can take a lot of forms as well. So that's IPM. It's not strictly necessary, I guess, but it's a lot better and easier than just waiting for something to go wrong and having to react to it on the fly. Well, that's all for now. If you got something useful out of this video, please, if you could do me a favor, please like this video and please subscribe to my channel. It would really help me out a lot. Well, thanks a lot for joining me and until next time, Take care.